Hello and a very warm welcome to our ABUS live session today. It's Saturday afternoon, sunny weather outside, and I hope that I will give you some interesting information now about a new and great innovation, automated breast ultrasound. My name is Alexandra Schulz, and I am the breast care ultrasound and ABUS leader in G Healthcare Europe, Middle East and Africa. And Today's session is really very interesting because we know about that breast cancer is the most common cancer worldwide. The World Health Organization recently published the new data on cancer diseases and we know about that 2D mammography screening is very efficient in picking up cancers, but we also know about that is that there is one issue which is breast density and therefore we know about that there is a need for supplemental screening technologies and today together with me i have a great key opinion leader on my side dr atina woods is from greece and let me first introduce her dr atina woods is a dedicated breast radiologist medical doctor phd she is the director and the founder of the diagnostic mammography center in athens she's also the founding president of the hellenic breast imaging society and she is the European leader of the Dense Breast Info Org, where she is also member of the advisory of the Medical Advisory Board. And we are now hearing first from Dr. Atina Wurzis about her opinion on automated breast ultrasound and how she really effectively integrated this new innovation in her practice. Thank you. Dear colleagues, I'm happy to present to you a short lecture on 3D ABUS and the impact of this new technology for women with dense breasts. These are my disclosures. And it has been widely acknowledged that mammography is not beneficial in women with dense breasts. Women that have C and D breast composition have major limitation in the detection of cancers that are presented without calcifications. And the added value of supplemental screening has been shown uh, in this very recent study following combined digital mammography as well as DBD as tomosynthesis. And in order to overpass the limitations of handheld breast ultrasound, ABUS has been developed. And the acquisition is performed starting the scan from the inferior part towards the uppermost part of the breast with the use of a large transducer that is three times larger than the transducer that is used with handheld breast ultrasound. Once the ABUS acquisition is obtained, we have the ability to reconstruct into multiplanar 3D images. These are the transverse, the X plane, this is the raw images, and this is the coronal, the reconstructed image, and the sagittal plane. We have the ability to review the breast in three-dimensional breast anatomy starting superficially from the skin, the subcutaneous fat, the fibroglandular tissue, tissue and breast lobules. For each breast, three volumes are obtained and these are the AP, the lateral and also the medial. And though these three volumes overlap to each other to cover the denser part of the breast. There are several perspective studies that have been shown the incremental breast cancer detection of when supplemental screening with ABUS in addition to mammography was conducted and 2.5 cancers were additional cancers detected when ABUS was combined to mammography and more, most importantly most of these cancers were invasive cancers node negative and this is a quite busy table but it shows that ABUS is equivalent performance in cancer detection rate compared to handheld breast ultrasound. However, in addition, ABUS has this several advantages. It is operator independent technique. It produces high reproducibility of images. We provide large field of view, multiplanar and tomographic thin slices. The coronal plane provides new information and this is the retraction phenomenal sign which has high specificity and sensitivity for invasive cancers, batch reading, double reading, and volumetric review of, of data is not feasible, as well as the integration of GAT systems. 
The interpretation time varies between different studies from three to nine minutes. And we started the implementation of ABUS in our practice in the beginning of 2016. We perform about 25 to 30 ABUS examinations per day. 70% are screening, 30% of our volume is diagnostic. ABUS is the initial examination in women with known dense breast composition. And we perform handheld, we use handheld as a second look breast ultrasound. This is a screening ABUS in the 46 year old where we detected on the coronal, the transverse and sagittal plane, a suspicious mass with indistinct margins, also shown on the transverse slices, thin slices. But in addition to the first mass, there is a second suspicious abnormality situated superiorly and laterally to the first one also seen on all three planes. Both of these lesions were further assessed with handheld breast ultrasound, and this proved to be an invasive lobular cancer, grade two. And looking back in mammography of this patient, this is the left breast, even in retrospect, both of the masses were not identified, neither they were seen on DVD slices. In order to have a successful implementation of ABUS, it is important to have close collaboration between our patient technologists and to have close feedback between radiologists and technologists. Our patients must be informed before starting the examination to avoid speaking and coughing during the acquisitions and also to breathe normally. It is important in order to optimize ABUS image quality that our technologists provides appropriate positioning, applies meticulous use of lotion, has complete coverage of all dense breast tissue, that the adjustment of depth is correct, also that the application of compression is uh, adequate, and also uh, the proper transducer placement. Now, from radiologist's point of view, it is important to have clinical information in every patient before starting interpreting ABUS studies, to read all volumes and all planes, and also to start working at least in the beginning in hybrid environment to perform both handheld and ABUS. It is important to be able to identify these post-surgical changes from real lesions, like this abnormality, which presented an invasive lobular carcinoma. So combined reading also is another important point that has shown to improve radiologist performance. Radiologists must be able to understand artifacts that are created sometimes on the images and how they, are, they appear in order to be able to distinguish them from real abnormalities. And this article that was published back in 2019 in Radiographics by Ingolf Karst, there is a table where you can read further uh, the type of artifacts. They are subcategorized into different categories, their causes, and also their appearance. Also, continuous education is important for both radiologists and technologists in order to enhance the quality of ABUS studies. The integration of CAT system has shown to improve confidence and also accuracy. And CAT, which is called QView CAT, it uses deep learning and machine learning and has the ability to automatically extract features from suspicious lesions and areas that are larger than five millimeters and to generate a score of suspicions. This is, this is the navigator image. This is called minimum intensity projection. You can see within the circle the suspicious abnormality that has been automatically pointed out by uh, the algorithm. A large study that was uh, published in radiology and evaluated more than 1,500 ABUS images, further evaluated the performance and the reading time of ABUS with or without a CAT system. And the results of this study that showed that CAT upgraded malignancies for beginning readers and also for experienced readers, CAT allowed for benign lesions to be downgraded from biopsy to follow-up recommendation. Also for both beginners and advanced readers, the rating time was decreased by 30% with the addition of CAT system uh, to ABUS study. And this is an ABUS screening in a patient. We can 
in uh, a screening patient where in the right breast there is a suspicious mass seen on all three projections and you can see that the mass was highlighted by, uh, by CAD. This was an invasive duct carcinoma. So the take home messages is the mammography is not effective enough in women with Dian's breast, that AVUS is efficient and reproducible and that it addresses the operator dependence that have been encountered with handheld breast ultrasound, that ABUS has equivalent performance in cancer detection rate compared to, to handheld and can be used as supplemental screening tool in women with dense breast, and that the integration of CAT reduces ABUS reading time and it improves performance of breast cancer detection. And with this, I would like to thank you all for your attention. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Dr. Wurzis. This was really an outstanding presentation. It's always great to hear from you and to learn from your experience how you have successfully implemented ABUS. So fantastic work. Thanks a lot, Dr. Wurzis. Now, before we are diving into the multimodality approach in looking at the clinical cases on the workstation, I want to dive together with you into our product cons to show you a bit more on our studies that we have and also a little bit more about how ABUS works and what kind of tools we have in place to help you with implementing ABUS. And I hope that I can provide you some information about the clinical pathway, starting from screening to diagnostic to staging and to surveillance, and to show you next to the very important clinical benefits, also some operational efficiency by implementing ABUS. And I really want to start with this hot topic about breast death. Density has to give you some figures about breast density. In Europe, we know about 40% of all women are having dense breast tissue. And we have one issue, and Dr. Woods has already mentioned that very well. In the normal 2D mammography, we can miss more than 50% of all the cancers in extremely dense breast tissue, so in Virat's category D. The women with dense breasts are having a four to six time higher risk to develop breast cancer. And 71% of all breast cancers are appearing in dense breast tissue. And women with dense breasts are having also a higher risk of developing a contralateral cancer and also an interval cancer. So a lot of clinical factors are really calling for supplement screening. This slide is showing very well about the different uh, density categories and the mammography sensitivity versus the ultrasound sensitivity. And especially in category C and D, we see about that ultrasound is the technology to pick up those cancers. Now, the question is about why do we need ABUS when we have a fantastic traditional breast ultrasound methodology, like on our Logic E10, for example. The answer is about ABUS is really made for screening. So it's accurate, it's reproducible, it is user independent. So this is very, very important. And also when we take a deeper into our studies and as well into our approval claims, this is what you can see on the screen right now. The Invinia ABUS 2.0 is the only ultrasound device which is approved from the FDA for breast cancer screening asymptomatic asymptomatic women with dense breasts, but also for the diagnostic approach in all symptomatic women. And this is based two major clinical studies. One study is the SOMO Insight study, and you see here 15,000 patients were carried out to get mammography, and for all women with dense breast, it was supplemented with automated breast ultrasound. This study was carried out in Washington uh, University, plus 11 other breast centers across the United States. Dr. Raquel Brehm was the principal investigator, and uh, Professor Laszlo Tabar was one of the study designers. You know him for sure. He is having a very high reputation here in Europe. And the uh, clinical values here was that we found 55% uh, 
an increase in invasive cancer detection rate. And you see 93% of all those cancers were invasive cancers, 93% were still node negative. So this is really a great clinical impact with finding these cancers. I also want to highlight one European study, the EASY study, European Asymptomatic Screening Study, published in European Journal of Radiology in 2015 from Dr. 2016, sorry, uh, from Dr. Wilczek and from Dr. Leifland. And uh, this patient population here was around 1,600 patients. The relative increase in cancer detection rate was 57%. So 2.4 additional cancers in 1,000 women screened were detected, which would have been actually missed with normal 2D mammogram. And one point that I really want to highlight here is the stable recall rate. So in this study, the recall rate was only 2.3%, which is fully in the range of the European guidelines for quality assurance in breast cancer screening and diagnostic. And there is a third proof point in this study. So St. Goran's Hospital, where this study was carried out, is a high volume screening center. They are having more than 270 patients every day. And the team there really showed about that ABUS is easy to implement also in this high level workflow. Another study and out and this study is I believe very important for all the national healthcare systems which are now looking to establish screening programs or which are now looking to expand their existing screening programs. Dr. Scabarotta and his team from Italy they did a great economic impact study where they compared three different scenarios. The s is scenario with mammography alone, the ideal scenario with supplemental ultrasound for dense breasts, and the to be scenario with supplemental ABUS for dense breasts. And uh, this study was measuring the costs over a three years period not only looking to the imaging costs, but furthermore, looking also to the treatment costs for the Italian NHS. And you see the very good results here. So the study was showing that the to be scenario, when we compare the to be to be scenario to the as is scenario, is coming along with a minus 1.05% saving for the Italian NHS, which is reflecting a 54 million euro saving for the Italian NHS. So this is really a very powerful economic impact study, which is showing that it really makes sense to find the cancers as early as possible, also in regards to the costs. Now let's dive a little bit deeper in another clinical field, how to help in the diagnostic and in the pre-surgical planning. So as Dr. Wurzis was already showing, we have with ABUS the coronal plane and the coronal plane brings us a lot of benefits because this is a brand new plane in ultrasound, which is normally not there in 2D traditional breast ultrasound. In this plane, we can really something say something more about uh, the breast lesion we are finding. So we see the full extent of the disease. We see very nicely about if there is a multicentric or multifocal lesion. We can say something about uh, the uh, retraction pattern, which is a sign for malignancy. And we see the relation of all the tumor structure to the normal breast structure. And I want to highlight here also a small study from Dr. Grady from United States. So he compared ABUS to MRI in the pre-surgical planning. And he said, because of the 3D volume and the coronal plane, ABUS is as effective and as accurate as MRI staging before the woman is going to the surgery. And this is really a great study, which is showing really the benefit of ABUS in the pre-surgical planning. Another study from Dr. Atina Wurzis, published in European Radiology, is saying something similar. So she was comparing ABUS to handheld ultrasound with a cohort of 1,886 women. 
And what she was saying is that the coronal plane is really providing superiority compared to handheld ultrasound because in the coronal plane, she can see the architectural distortion very well. And this is a typical sign for malignant lesions. And this is giving her really an idea about how big the lesion is in reality. So when we take now a look to all the women and to all the patients, what are the patients thinking about ABUS? I believe this is also very important, what we need to evaluate. And there is a study done in United States where the pain measurement and the pain acceptance was uh, was described. And you see here that ABUS is having really very good values compared to normal mammography. So the women really like ABUS because, first of all, it's non-invasive. We don't need contrast agent. We have selectable compression levels as well. And we have a curved transducer, which is fitting very well to the breast shape. So therefore, it's a very comfortable exam for all the women. Now, how are we helping you as a medical technology provider to give you some support beyond our technology? And this is um, very important because we also learned from Dr. Wurzis before, training and continuous education is the key to implement ABUS successfully. And therefore, we have developed a mastery program for physicians. So every customer today in Europe was passing this peer-to-peer -peer training. And Dr. Atina Wurz is from Greece, Professor Laszlo Taba from Sweden, and also PD Dr. Magda Margon from University Hospital in Zürich are our peer educators here in Europe. And this program, this educational program is actually coming from United States because the FDA is requiring this very deep peer-to-peer -peer trainings concept because of the FDA class three approval, which I told you before. And we took over this great educational program to Europe. Also, the technologist's training is very advanced. So we have a European advanced application team, which is really in charge of delivering a high impactful and a high qualitative um, application training for the technicians. Furthermore, we are also having tools which are helping to educate the patients to inform also the referring physicians. And this is also very important that the women are becoming more and more aware about the breast density issue. And then for continuous and ongoing education, we have in GE Healthcare our loyalty clubs. So we have the ABUS club and here we have really great educational webinars and always the latest publications available to read through. And now, before we are moving to this clinical case review, I want to show you how ABUS works. And therefore, we are now watching a great acquisition video. Invenia ABUS 2.0 automated breast ultrasound system uses 3D ultrasound technology to comfortably and quickly image women with dense breast tissue. Invenia ABUS has been proven to improve cancer detection when added to mammography. The exam begins by selecting the patient information from a work list or entering it manually. The intuitive user interface enables quick parameter setup customized to individual body habitus. Gain and focus are automatically set, creating operator independence and repeatability. Proper positioning is necessary to help achieve high quality studies. The patient lays supine, Towels, sponges, or pillows may be used to help evenly distribute the breast tissue and position the nipple pointing toward the ceiling. A thin layer of ultrasound lotion is applied. It is suggested to use a medical grade spatula to assist in an even and light application. A disposable single use mesh membrane is used to aid in acoustic coupling, compression, and stabilization. The arrow on the transducer helps with alignment and positioning. Gentle pressure is applied to evenly thin the breast tissue while aligning it parallel to the skin. The compression assist feature is used to set the pressure to one of three levels. Compression levels are adjusted while the patient breathes normally. 
The scan head assembly houses the exclusive 15 centimeter reverse curve transducer, which conforms to the female anatomy. With the touch of a button, the operator begins the acquisition. The transducer moves from the inferior to superior edge. Each acquisition takes under one minute. The typical NVIDIA ABUS 2.0 exam consists of three views or volumes. Six volumes are acquired for a full exam, three per breast. These volumes overlap, allowing for additional coverage of the central aspect of the breast where typically the denser cone of breast tissue exists. Routinely, the volumes will include a centrally located anterior posterior AP and AP projections of both the lateral and medial aspects of the breast. With intuitive graphics, users can customize protocols and take additional views for larger breast sizes and implants. For patients with smaller breast sizes, the acquisition can be shortened with the stop scan feature. After the acquisition is complete, a coronal view is displayed. The operator marks the nipple and performs a quality assessment review using either coronal or transverse data. The CINE review function can also be used to automate the review. The full exam is typically 15 to 20 minutes, which includes patient preparation and image acquisition. 3D volumes are sent to the NVIDIA ABUS viewer at the end of the study. The reconstructed 3D coronal slices allow for easy visualization of abnormalities on multiple views. Correlation with other projections and planes can be performed, and various hanging protocols, measurements, and image manipulation tools are available for thorough review and interpretation. The Auto Prior Compare feature mimics screening mammography workflow with the ability to save and compare priors for repeatable and reproducible longitudinal study comparisons. Invenia ABUS 2.0, helping physicians look differently at dense breast tissue. Okay, so now we are coming to the live clinical case review and now you see the station is live on the screen. And let me start really with um, explaining you the basic of what we are seeing on the workstation. Okay, then uh, all the case review will be much more easier. So on the left side of the screen, you see the right AP volume. So you remember from the acquisition video, this is the acquisition where the transducer comes straight ahead down in an AP position to the breast. Okay, so on top of the screen, I'm seeing my coronal plane. The coronal plane, this is what you know from MRI, from CT, so from other imaging modalities, this is my coronal plane. And in the coronal plane, we see here the nipple marker, the yellow dot, which is marked from the technicians right after the acquisition. When we take a look to the uh, lower part of the screen, here we see the axial or trans plane and this is the plane that you also know from normal handheld ultrasound okay but think in abus you have a 15 centimeter transducer so the field of view that you are seeing is 15 centimeter compared to what you actually normally know from breast ultrasound where you have a four or five centimeter transducer so we are seeing here really the full breast what we are normally doing is we are having a standardized protocol to review the images and we are normally scrolling through the coronal okay and this coronal plane is our screening plane where we can say okay the transversal plane is more our diagnostic plane what you can also see on the right side of the image is now already my second volume, the right lateral volume. And um, you saw in the acquisition video, this is where the transducer comes more from the side, where we also go a little bit more up to have the lower part of the axillary tail in. So with that acquisition protocol right now, I'm comparing the AP and the lateral volume already. And as you can see here, these volumes are synchronized. So that means when I'm scrolling through my coronal plane, it's scrolling down in all the volumes, okay? So in the AP and in the lateral. And suddenly there is this big lesion popping up and is getting, of course, my 
I am. So I'm now clicking into this lesion and I can scroll down furthermore. And now I also recognize here a small satellite lesion. And as soon as I click in, it's correlated to the transversal and to the axial plane. So what I can now make on the workstation is you see the, the crosshair in the coronal plane. So I select this crosshair and I am now the crosshair to see also this small satellite lesion in my axial acquisition, okay? So actually, this is the same movement like when you're doing handheld ultrasound and you are turning the transducer on the skin level of the breast. So this is exactly the same movement. And now I see here suddenly the two lesions next to each other. And then, of course, I can make measurements. So I can do my diagnostic workout here, so I can take measurements. I'm also seeing here the shadows behind the lesion. So I'm taking my measurements and um, what I can also make here on the, uh, on the ABO system is that I can mark my lesions. So this is a very nice way, especially when the woman is coming back. But also this is very important because then this marker is providing me into my report and I show you in a minute exactly the clock position, the skin distance and the nipple distance. So therefore we are placing these markers into the lesions that we are finding. Now I'm also placing a secondary marker in this small satellite lesion here and um, so this is very nice because always when I'm having more than one lesion it's easy to follow up in 3D ultrasound really all the lesions all the time. Okay. Now, I mean, if I want to move further to create a report now, a structured report, I can also go to a program called Lesion Characterization Program. And here I have the ability to make a really great and advanced report to characterize my findings. So I'm saying now here, okay, this is speculated, the echo pattern is hypoechoic, the orientation is non-parallel, the boundary, and I'm also saying about that I'm seeing some shadowing behind the lesion, and the surrounding tissue is that I'm having some architectural distortions, I don't see any microcals so far, and I'm assuming this is a solid mass, and my guess it is a Byrat's five, I would say, and what my notes is, I am recommending now a biopsy to this patient, okay? And with that um, detailed report, I'm really able to have all these details in a full report. And this is what I'm opening now. And in this summary report, you find now every, uh, what I have closed now. Okay, so you can see here, first of all, a body pattern with these two markers about my primary marker for the big lesion and the secondary marker for the small lesion. And you see here very nicely described the finding number one, which is saying, okay, this is at 1030, 12 millimeter from the skin and 44 millimeter from the nipple. So you have really a very exact location of this marker of the cancer. So then also you see my, my description of the tumor is transferred here. And I think what is very, very important here is that also the images are going automatically to this report. Okay. Because it's really effective, right? And right now I have now designed a workflow here on my workstation. When I'm saying now sign on this report, this full patient will be put directly to the PAC system. So you see really it's a very effective way of reading the ABUS exams. And on my workstation, you see the next patient is popping up automatically. Okay, and now we are doing exactly the same. So we are taking a look at the coronal plane. I have my right AP volume on the left side and the right lateral on the right side. Now I see the image is a little bit blurry, so I'm changing and adapting a little bit brightness and contrast. And I'm doing now exactly the same review that we did in the 
the first. So we are scrolling down in the coronal plane. And this was a young woman with extremely dense breast tissue and the mammogram. So this is a case from United States. So she was around 40 years old. The mammogram was negative. And when I'm now looking at ABUS, a small black hole here at 12 o'clock is calling my attention. And when I'm correlating this small black hole to my axial plane, we see that there is really a very small cancer. And um, I'm just placing here a marker around this cancer disease that you all see that very well. And this is a cancer which is really very small and which would have been missed in mammogram. You see it's around six millimeter by five millimeter. So really a very, very small cancer finding. And this is really the value of automated breast ultrasound. So we are picking up those small, tiny and invasive cancers. So histologically, it was an invasive lobular carcinoma. And I would also highlight here now the lateral exam and you see I'm just scrolling through my coronal plane and here this is again the cancer finding you see that also here again in the axial plane and what I also want to point out here because that was really nice positioning you see the lateral acquisition is positioned that we also have very nicely covered the uh, um, upper outer quadrant but as well the lower part of the axillary tail. And here we see the lymph node, which was uh, still negative, but we can actually something also about the level one lymph nodes in the axillary tail. So now I'm moving to another case, which is coming from Dr. Atina Wurzis from this. And here I want to start with showing you the mammogram. And I'm starting with the CC acquisition. I'm changing a little bit brightness and contrast to make it better visible for you. And actually, there is nothing circumscribed in, in both breasts. There is a side asymmetry, of course, it's going in the left breast. So we have also here a magnify class where we can take a, a deeper look. But actually, nothing, nothing really circumscribed here. So we take a quick look to the MLO acquisition and also on the MLO acquisition you see on the left breast there is a kind of side asymmetry compared to the right breast but nothing really circumscribed. And now with ABUS I would actually follow the same protocol so I would start with the right AP, right lateral but in this case let me pick up immediately the left uh, volume left AP volume and we can actually keep the LMO acquisition here and I'm just seeing on the live screen that it's a little bit dark so I'm adjusting a little bit the brightness and the the contrast okay so now let's take a look again at ABUS and we are starting again at the coronal plane so we are scrolling through the coronal plane of the left breast we have the left AP volume we see the nipple in the center and I see immediately one lesion is popping up here another one is coming here and let's move further so we have started on skin level and now we are going down and I see that there is many things going on in this coronal plane of the left AP acquisition. So I see the first lesion here. I'm placing a marker. I see another defect here. I see also that there is an architectural distortion very well visible here at 1230. So I'm placing a marker here. There is something going on at 230 where I'm placing another marker. And if we scroll down furthermore, we see that there is also something going on here at two o'clock. And uh, this lady actually, and here again, another lesion, and they are of course uh, all uh, linked to each other. And this was a multifocal and multicentric um, invasive ductal cancer histologically confirmed, which was actually not very clear on 2D mammogram. Okay, 
And now let me show you another thing, which is now handheld ultrasound. So I'm bringing up now my handheld ultrasound exam from this lady. And um, on the right side, you see now, okay, this is the first lesion we are normally finding with handheld ultrasound. Okay, so I'm finding this lesion. I make my measurements. I'm placing my body pattern. Then I'm scanning further. I'm seeing another lesion and I'm doing exactly the same. So I'm measuring, I'm setting my body pattern, and then I'm scanning further and I find a, a third lesion. And then it's going on and going on. And finally, this very complex and difficult breast takes me more than 45 minutes or even more to have a really good overview with normal handheld ultrasound. And now coming back to ABUS, what is the benefit of ABUS? I think it's very, very clear. So you are just scrolling through the coronal plane and within 10 seconds, you really have an overview about what's going on in the breast. I see immediately all the different lesions of the breast. And one thing I also want to point out here. So we have also a very nice um, hanging protocol which is showing here this uh, 3D volume. So, and you see here all the different markers that I have placed here. And um, so this is very important for doing a biopsy, for example, or for the students to make the surgical planning because this 3D volume is helping really a lot to see how this multifocal and multicentric cancer disease is spread over the full breast. Yeah, so this is really a very nice tool, which is in usage a lot um, within all our customers who are working in academic uh, breast centers. So in this case, I also want to point out another great reading protocol. So this is our multi-slice protocol and Professor Laszlo Tabar is all always starting with this protocol when he is starting to read an ABUS exam. So this is a multi-slice protocol in two millimeter consic slices. So the slice thickness is two millimeters and we are starting to look at the first um, image in the left upper outer corner and this is the skin level and then we are going down two millimeter slice thickness and then here we are seeing the first uh, defect in the coronal plane and also here I see all the images where I have placed my markers in and from here we can then change the protocol to go to this protocol where we are seeing the axial the coronal and the sagittal plane. And this is also a very nice view to take a look at ABUS when it is mainly used for screening. Also a very time effective method to read through ABUS. So I want to show you um, another case. And this is also a very nice case because here we are seeing the benefits when we are using ABUS as a comparison technology to look at priors. Okay. And this was a woman who was actually coming to the breast department. She was feeling something in her, in her left, uh, in her right breast. And um, she was having extremely dense breast tissue. And again, the mammography did not catch up with the lesion. And um, I'm now placing here the right lateral volume from 2017. So let me take a look at the left side. So this is the right lateral volume from 2017. And I'm scrolling down now and I'm seeing here one lesion and also one clip which has been uh, placed uh, during the biopsy. And um, so this is something where we are now doing again the correlation to the axial plane and we can take really a deeper look how this uh, lesion is looking like in the axial plane. And the system is telling me again on the left side, so this is at 10 o'clock, the nipple distance and the skin distance. And now I want to compare this exam to the prior exam from 2016 and I'm just pressing now on my keyboard of the workstation A, which is called auto prior compare. And you see the system is bringing up automatically the 
same volume, so the right lateral, in the exact same position from the year before. And here we see the initial exam of this lady. So actually it was two lesions. We see that very well in the coronal plane. Um, the first lesion here, which has been uh, surgically removed, and the second lesion, the big lesion here, which was under monitoring, under neoadjuvant chemotherapy. And here really, I think it's very great to see the great benefits of automated breast ultrasound. So it's 3D, you can store full volumes, you have always access to coronal, to axial and to the sagittal plane. And you can easily compare the exam of today with the prior exam. So time is flying and I believe this is now already uh, we are now already coming to the end of this ABUS live session. I hope you enjoyed this session as much as I did. And if you have any further questions to ABUS, if you want to book your personalized demonstration, your product demonstration, please don't hesitate to contact me directly at alexandra.schulz at ge.com or visit our very rich GE healthcare page at ECR 2021. And with this, I want to close this session and I want to say thank you to everyone who joined this Saturday afternoon session. Thanks a lot.